RRI has researchers working on soft condensed matter where there's efforts to understand and harness the properties of soft materials as well as devise probes to understand the physics of living matter. Probably RRI has the only soft matter group in the whole country, you know, where we exclusively uh, focus on uh, soft materials. These materials are in between crystalline solids and simple liquids. One interesting aspect of soft materials is the possibility to directly observe the structural transformations during the flow of these materials. See, Raman founded the Raman Research Institute to pursue his scientific research after he retired at the age of 60. And incidentally, S. Chandrasekhar, my guide, was his first research student in the Raman Research Institute. And he started liquid crystal research work in Mysore University. And when we joined the Raman Research Institute in 1971, by that time, the displays had just been invented, liquid crystal displays. One of the liquid crystal phase known as uh, discotic columnar phase was discovered in this uh, laboratory long back and that actually made a field in itself. That is how the lab became quite well known. I came to RRI in 2005 uh, as a scientist and then there weren't too many groups. So it expanded further and then Pramod uh, joined. Pramod was earlier my student he wanted to start a biophysics lab. It was a very hard decision and uh, it took a long time to get into this field, especially as an experimentalist because you have to learn how to work with cells and so on because I do cell biophysics. It is a journey which I never regretted. I was always like very happy and enjoying this, uh, this process all throughout. Sayantan is doing earthquakes uh, sitting in a lab, you know, you know, seeing analogy between earthquakes and what he sees. The other one is again very interesting experiments. So now it has branched out and only Arun Rai continues to work on thermotropic liquid crystals. We still keep this tradition. We are still working on many, many different types of molecules and trying to discover new types of phases. Liquid crystal is a special class of soft matter. And what you need to form a liquid crystal are molecules with anisotropic shape, like this pen. This looks like a rod. Their properties can be tuned easily by external stimuli such as electric field or magnetic field or shear. We study these materials, why it is showing that phases, what is the molecular organization, and then possibly we also try to find out where these applications can be. We have studied phases of bent core banana shaped molecules and uh, reported many exotic properties of them. We also studied crystal polymorphism of rod-like molecules with a highly polar. We found that they show some growth called banded spherulitic growth. In other materials, it has been observed, but in our system, the mechanism of the formation of this banded spherulite is quite different. So we work on the flow of macromolecular suspensions. Colloidal suspensions are materials that you use all the time. For instance, milk, blood, uh, you eat mayonnaise, right? The paint with which we paint our walls. Now, how do these materials flow when we take these colloidal particles and we put them in a dispersing medium? Looking at the flow of a bulk material with many, many colloidal particles in the medium, we can actually uh, correlate our flow data and understand about the microscopic structure and dynamics which we really don't have access to. Colloids are a fantastic model system. Their dynamics are slower, their sizes are larger, so they are much easier to image, their dynamics are much easier to study. We also engineer our own materials, we can also make our own materials. Okay, so using colloidal suspensions, we can make colloidal glasses. They are not packed 
beautifully in stacks like say cannonballs would be, but they are completely disordered. So one of the colloidal suspensions for instance that we work on are clay suspensions. So I mean what we basically create in the lab is a kind of a designer soil. It has predictive power. So you know you can use it to understand for instance you know geophysical phenomena like uh, landslides, like earthquakes and like river delta formation. Right now we have a biophysics program here at RRI and we mainly work on uh, neuronal cells. In particular we are interested in mechanical properties of axons. What I am mostly interested in the um, mechanical properties of actin filaments. So actin filaments are uh, part of cytoskeletons, uh, just like our skeleton which gives a shape to a cell. We study how neurons undergo damage. Uh, how they undergo atrophy via these various shape instabilities or mechanical damage from two different perspectives. The neurons, because they do not divide and repair damage in this way, neurodegeneration is a particularly hard problem compared to damage to your skin cells or muscle cells or things like that. From a material science perspective, because these tubes have evolved very, very special mechanisms to withstand mechanical stresses, which you do not see in synthetic materials. So understanding these mechanisms can also help us uh, probably in developing biomimetic materials in future and so on. To study the actin filaments, I am developing a custom made optical tweezers which can detect rotations also. I found this uh, fascinating that it can be applied to bi biological physical aspects also. One of the important systems that we are really interested in uh, is called the chromatin. Your DNA inside your one single cell is about two meters long and the question is that how is this very long polymer is packaged inside a cell nucleus which is about about 10 microns in size. It needs to be opened up, actively read and then repackaged and this happens in the time scales of milliseconds. The forces involved in these particular systems are very very tiny forces. So we build biophysical tools which are sensitive to these very tiny forces in the last uh, six to eight years, we have perfected our in-house made glass nanopore systems. Using this technique, we have for the first time show quantitative measurements of these supercoiled structures of the DNA and how is these structures regulated by DNA necking enzymes. We have now recently progressed our work into arrays of nucleosome, building our understanding slowly towards uh, the chromatin uh, system. The second part of my lab uh, specifically looks at the whole cell level and there the idea is to understand how stiffness of a biological cell can be used as a biomarker for early detection of diseases. And we can use this small portable device in field like in hospitals and in rural areas to do our experiments. So just based on our technique, this device, we can diagnose what the patient is dealing with. Our lab works on soft materials. So at low frequency these materials behave as a viscous liquid but at high frequency they behave like a solid. Now currently we are excited in the possibility of encoding memories in inanimate objects to design smart materials. Recently we have made important contribution in the field of designing shock absorbing materials based on uh, dense suspensions. But also along the way we also uh, study various fundamental nonlinear and non-equilibrium aspects of the system and also various instabilities we probe. You have to have state-of-the-art equipment if you want to be competitive internationally. Commitment to finding natural truths. That is Raman Research Institute. That's the meaning of research in this place. We are kind of quite independent when it comes to our experiments. So we can do everything in our laboratory plus our soft condensed matter uh, group. We have fantastic central facilities. When I joined as a new faculty and I was setting up my lab, 
So I, I had full access to the institute uh, instrumental facilities. And the people who were operating this actually instrument, they are also very much efficient. Instruments have its own strength and weaknesses. So we are combining the strength and weakness of each instrument to contribute to the science in RRI. So setting up a biophysics lab at RRI has been a challenging task. And the first task was to develop some of these facilities. So here uh, we have instruments for performing the molecular level work to the microbiological level work. See, we had a synthetic organic chemistry lab to make new compounds. We are working mainly on liquid crystal synthesis and characterization. So we developed a lot of instrumentation as uh, studying mechanical properties of neurons or other cell types uh, often cannot be done with commercial instruments. So when my supervisor told me that I had to build an optical tweezers uh, from scratch, I wasn't worried that it, it cannot be done or something. Uh, we have the components in their lab and I'm getting very good support from the workshop. We use amplifiers which cost somewhere around 2 to 3 lakhs. One of them is this Exxon amplifier which costs somewhere around uh, 12 lakhs. We have made a small miniature version of these amplifiers which, uh, in just uh, 3500 bucks. Each day as I age, I feel I, I am growing more, more younger, seeing the more younger minds coming here. And they have plenty of questions to ask me. And I've been learning each day from them. The equipment, okay, you can make measurements, but you should know what you are doing. What is the new thing? What's the new thing that you can do with that equipment? In order to get that, that is where the character of the individual scientist comes out. And I'm quite sure we have, I'm very happy that many of our young faculty here are, uh, you know, uh, very competitive in the international arena. So RRI encourages collaborative project, both inside the institute, uh, nationally, and uh, in international levels, which is very crucial to perform world-class uh, research because we have to be aware of uh, what is happening in any corner of the world uh, to contribute in uh, fundamental science. But then because we work on materials, we also talk to lots of people. This is very interdisciplinary. This sort of interactions are extremely important because you need a cr critical mass of people uh, in order to sustain this sort of interdisciplinary work. So we've spoken to chemists, we've spoken to biologists, we've talked, uh, spoken to geophysicists. We also still collaborate with uh, a lot of chemists uh, around, the, around India. Then we had an engineer to work on liquid crystal displays addressing techniques. We collaborate with theoretical physicists and we also collaborate very intensely with biologists. Uh, for example, we have a collaboration with uh, a colleague in Iser, uh, Iser Pune. So, uh, the most unique thing about RRI is uh, besides applied research, it also supports and mainly focuses on high risk uh, fundamental research. As a liquid crystal researcher, I found that RRI is the best place to join as a postdoctoral fellow. And we know RRI has a history with liquid crystal, like uh, some uh, big name in India who actually did liquid crystal research, like Chandra Sekhar, Sadashiva, Madhusudana. Actually, they used to work in RRI. I am a liquid crystals man. I cannot forget liquid crystals. I will, as far as my wits, you know, do not fail me, I will work on that. Uh, that's it gives me pleasure. That is the point, you know. Research you do for your personal pleasure. Because if I understand something new, I feel elated.